Hello, everyone, and welcome to another Tech Talk. Red Hat Enterprise Linux, or RHEL version 9, reached beta status late last year, and more recently the binary compatible clone Alma Linux released its own beta 9, Emerald Puma. Let's check it out. Emerald Puma is currently in beta, with an expected mid-year 2022 release. Production server use is not yet advised, but you can test your apps and services against RHEL 9 already with this release. To that end, today I'd like to set up a workstation and configure a desktop that works for my workflow. Let's boot the beta ISO in a QEMU virtual machine and get started. I've already tested uh, this media, so let's go straight to the install. And uh, with bated breath, we're waiting for the Anaconda installer to load. And there it is. English um, locale is set correctly. English keyboard, installation sources, local media, the device selection for the installation destination, the defaults we'd like to uh, keep today, the automatic. Language support, everything looks good. Um, for software selection, I'll do workstation, uh, backup client, GNOME applications, headless management, internet applications, remote desktop clients, uh, console internet tools, development tools, graphical administration tools, RPM development tools, and system tools. That'll do it for this demonstration today. Uh, the kernel dump is a kernel crash dumping mechanism in the event of a system. Now we won't need that. Let's just disable kernel dump to save a little RAM. Time and date look good. Uh, network host name. Um, we'll call this uh, host Alma 9 beta and hit apply. We've got an IP address, so that looks good. We won't use a security profile today for this demonstration. And I'll give myself an administrator account, Steven. I'll give myself a password. Click Done. And that'll automatically disable uh, the root account, which is a good thing. So go ahead and click Begin Installation. And uh, we'll edit out most of this since this is a uh, longer process, as you guys are probably aware. Uh, don't want to uh, make you guys too bored yet this early in the video and we're done let's reboot I'm gonna keep this keep this video as short as possible all right so we're booting into the installed system Our QEMU KVM we'll use the standard x11 display server since this is a VM and skip Wayland for today Log in. Uh, this is GNOME 40. Uh, you guys have seen the, the tour like forever. So let's go into settings, go into power, and let's disable screen blanking today. And next, let's go to displays and fix the screen resolution to 1920 by 1080. I'll keep those changes. I like to uh, enable night light at this point. Uh, for accessibility, so you guys can see what I'm doing, I'll enable large text. If I click on About, this is what we have here. So you can see it's uh, Alma Linux 9 Beta Emerald Puma running on a KVM. All right, let's open up the terminal and make it full screen. And first thing, sudo dnf upgrade dash dash refresh. Enter my password. And it looks like uh, it's already up to date, but I just want to make sure. Yeah, it's completely up to date. So let's clear the screen and let's check take a look at the RAM usage here. We've got one gig. That's very reasonable for GNOME 40. We're running kernel 5.14, Enterprise Linux 9. The new compiler collection is version 11.2.1 .1 from November of last year already. Python uh, version is 3.9.10. Again, this is basically built on Fedora 34, this whole system. 
The file system table looks thusly. We've got a root XFS uh, system for server performance. Uh, VFAT boot EFI partition. And then we've got a swap in an LVM partition. So nothing fancy here. Uh, three partitions on our VDA drive. VDA3 has uh, LVM root and LVM swap. Okay, pretty standard. We're doing, we're doing the defaults today. The repo list shows AppStream, base OS, and extras for AMA Linux 9 beta. So let's add some repos. Let's do sudo dnf install dash dash no gpg check https uh, colon slash slash dl dot fedora project dot org slash pub slash epel slash epel release dash latest dot uh, dash nine dot no arch dot rpm. So those are the uh, enterprise uh, packages, extra, extra packages for enterprise Linux, because once we have those, we can enable uh, RPM fusion with uh, dash dash no GPG check HTTPS colon slash slash mirrors dot RPM fusion dot org slash free slash EL slash RPM fusion dash free dash release dash nine dot no arch dot RPM. And we'll make a new line here. And then for the non-free, release. We've got https colon slash slash mirrors dot rpm fusion dot org slash non free slash el slash rpm fusion dash non free dash release dash nine dot no arch dot rpm. You can pause this video at any time uh, uh, to catch up with typing. So I'm going uh, through this very quickly today. Don't want to waste your time. Okay, so we've got that. So the EL repo or the Enterprise uh, Linux community repo for recent mainline kernels and uh, develop tool sets uh, and so forth are not yet available. They should be coming in soon, hopefully before uh, RHEL 9 hits the uh, um, release. So let's take a look at our repo repository list. So you've got, in addition to the AMA Linux stuff, extra packages and Fusion, RPM Fusion. So let's uh, sudo dnf install a la carte, that's the menu editor for GNOME, GNOME-tweaks, because of course, and NeoFetch. So um, we'll let that install. So it's usually pulling us in from Fusion, most of this stuff. Um, yeah, Apple and AppStream, actually. So a combination of these two. So let's uh, import the keys and we're done. Okay. So next, let's enable the full Flatpak Flathub repository with Flatpak remote add. If not exists, Flathub https colon slash slash flathub dot org slash repo slash flathub dot flatpak repo. Again, hit pause at any time. And uh, so we authenticate and we got our full flathub repo enabled. So let's install a couple of flatpaks. Um, let's do uh, extensions for GNOME extensions, LibreOffice and Brave, my favorite uh, browser. So we'll select the actual packages that we'd like to install. And uh, here we go. So it's downloading um, the platform packages, the um, uh, Brave browser, uh, the um, GNOME platform stuff for the GNOME extensions. And then finally, it's going to pull down and install the uh, LibreOffice uh, Flathub package, the Flatpak. And it's done. All right. That's a pretty wallpaper. I think I'll stick with that. 
So this is the Alma Linux website. We'll go back to it in a moment. We'd like to install some extensions. Let's go to extensions.gnome.org. Click here to install browser extensions, continue to installation, add, allow to run in private windows, and let's reload and we should be done. Good. Let's look for my favorite extensions for GNOME 40 at least and higher. I like App Indicator uh, Case Status Notifier uh, for the legacy tray icons. It can come in very handy. I'd also like to install the Arc menu. And uh, you can see in the top left, Arc menu is ready to go. And uh, next, dash to panel. Make it more of a traditional desktop. Still getting used to GNOME 40 plus. So there's Arc menu, and down here is the uh, uh, dash to panel, the new panel. Next, uh, let's do uh, the extension list so we know what extensions we're running. So if something goes wrong, we know what extensions we need to toggle to help troubleshoot. So there's the extension list in the bottom right. Okay, uh, next, I like to enable the uh, place the status indicator. It gives uh, me a convenient uh, shortcut location for the common places in the file system. And next, uh, we'll do the sound input and output device chooser. Shows a list of sound output and input devices, uh, very handy. So it expands this menu in the bottom right here with all your devices sound devices uh, that you can uh, configure, input and output. User themes, you never know when that comes in handy if you'd like to do additional theming. Um, so you can install your themes in your user directory and load them from there using the Tweaks tool. Speaking of which, let's launch Tweaks tool. So extensions has moved to uh, the uh, Flathub package, which we've already done earlier. So let's uh, switch to Adwaita Dark. There's your user themes section. In, uh, and we also are using LCD screens. Slight hinting look good. Uh, window title bars. I'd like to uh, enable maximize and minimize those two buttons for a more traditional look and feel. So uh, dash to panel preferences. Um, I'd like to uh, make this 32 pixel panel thickness. And I'd like to uh, disable um, the Applications button and the Activities button. I just need the Arc menu on the bottom left. And for style, I'd like to um, reduce the margin app icon margin, make them a little closer together. Again, your needs may be different from mine. Beauty is in the eyes of the beholder. So I like to also, in the Arc menu settings, uh, increase the icon size to 32 pixels. Make it really obvious where the menu button is. Okay, let's launch Terminal and let's enable Cockpit with system, sudo systemctl enable now cockpit.socket. So we should start listening to connections to port 9090. Uh, the firewall is already configured. I've checked this, but you might want to check yourself for your own install. But uh, it should be configured to allow cockpit uh, requests to get through the firewall. Let's skip the uh, first setup for Brave, make it the default browser, why not? So localhost colon 9090 should give us the login screen for the Alma Linux cockpit website, which is the local configuration uh, website service. Web console is running uh, as guests, so it's turn on administrative. And uh, there's Emerald Puma. So one service has failed to start. Let's see what's up with that. Ah, yeah, my CPU, it's a Ryzen 9, is unsupported the HX series, so let's turn it off. We don't need that anyway. Okay, everything else looks good. System is up to date. 
Very nice. Uh, cockpit is a topic for another video. But if you're running workstations, so if you ser and servers should be enforcing SE Linux. But uh, if you want to run KVMs, et cetera, et cetera, virtual machines um, as a workstation, set SE Linux to permissive. After you set that, you need to reboot. Message to logged in users. Well, there's nobody else logged in the system today, so we'll be rude and say reboot with no delay. All right, so SE Linux has been switched to permissive. Again, as a service, as a server, production particularly, never do that. I strongly recommend against it. But also personal workstation, SE Linux can be turned off. Okay, so let's open up the terminal. Let's do the NeoFetch. And as you can see, we've got uh, around 1,400 packages, give or take. Um, GNOME 40.9 and 976 megabytes of usage. Free.h shows 942 megabytes. Very reasonable, considering all the services that are running, such as Cockpit, that's a very reasonable uh, RAM load. Okay, Ubuntu, are you listening? <laughs> anyway, so here's the amalinux.org main website. They've got an Elevate project, an open source initiative to assist users performing migrations between different RHEL derivative-based distributions. Okay, very nice. Again, all these tools are free. You can contribute to the Amalinux OS development project. It's definitely community-driven. General chat, development, et cetera, et cetera. Security documentation, marketing web presence. Okay, um, yeah, we've got GitHub, Reddit, community chat, and also community forums. Let's discover that. Oh yeah, okay, so a pretty broad forum, broad a number of topics. Not too many conversations yet. I mean, Alma Linux is just getting started. It's relatively new, um, but still is something uh, where you can discuss. So it's an open source, community-driven Linux operating system that fills the gap left by discontinuation of CentOS Linux. It's one-to-one, -one binary compatible. So it's, ba it's backed by its parent organization, which is Cloud Linux. It's been around for you know 10 years or so, I think. But you see a lot of big names are backing Alma Linux. I think that's a great sign. It's a good, it portends for a very good future. So TuxCare uh, for commercial support. So Alma Linux is enterprise grade. Alma means soul in Spanish. So they're calling it the soul of Linux. Well, the community is the soul of Linux rather. I think it's a good name. What motivated us? Um, well, uh, Cloud Linux needs that since CentOS, CentOS is no more, just CentOS Stream, which is not the same thing. Topic for another time. So Alma Linux will always be free and open. Yeah, it's a rel, uh, based on a rel fork, which is Cloud Linux's uh, core product. So they, they offer good switching tools. Everything's free. Yeah, one-to-one -one binary compatible with rel. And rel 8, this is rel beta 9, but rel Eight is supported until 2029, which is very good. So here's some press quotes. Okay. Um, so there we go. That is uh, a whirlwind workstation configuration for Ama Linux Beta 9, the way I like to do it. Again, this is my own basic setup of a RHEL test box and workstation. Let me know in the comments if you know of anything more stable or rock solid in the Linux server world than RHEL and its clones. I'll be sure to check it out. Thanks so much for watching. Please comment, smash that like button, and subscribe. And I look forward to seeing you again next time.